the confidence. Hart looked at what he could do, all the flaws he had. And what he really didn't realize is he had Ramirez hurt late in the fight, didn't take advantage of it. It's, 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 it's not just experience, it's a kind of wisdom. Nicholson tries to rally back here at the end of one. Wide swinging from Hart. Watch this. You got to watch it in slow motion and then they replay on how he lined it up. This happens actually too frequently with um, Jesse Hart. In 2016, a fighter by the name of jo Deshaun Johnson almost ended his title shot run in the 12th round. And basically, if you were to know the story and if it was a headline for the story, it was a, it was his last fight in Philly before this. Let's go look at it. 24-1 um, and one with 20 KOs. 29 years old, six foot three, which is, you know, um, one of the big uh, talking points of his career at 168 pounds. Also, he's very marketable for top rank or for boxing in general at 100 mm, at 168 pounds because he knows how to work the mic he can talk in this day and age if you know how to work the microphone and you got skills in the ring you can go far even we've seen with guys like adrian broner if you always don't deliver if you're a charismatic dude and you know how to work the microphone you know you're go you're 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 going to succeed i don't know why he hasn't really i'm trying to figure out like why he's not bigger than what he is right now he's been around for some time before let's go finish looking at his resume I was kind of pissed I couldn't get to this fight, but it was nothing I couldn't do. I mean, it was nothing I could do because I was I couldn't walk. You know, this took place. His last fight, this fight uh, we just sort of highlights for took place at the Leah Core Center down at um, Temple University. It's on basically Broad and Cecil B. Moore. I grew up on um, 21st in Oxford, which is basically 21st and Cecil B. Moore. So um, Brian Jennings grew up around there, too. He was the headliner of the card. Thomas Wimbanu, this was a nasty knockout right here. And then let's talk about the Gilberto Ramirez fight. Gilberto Ramirez right now is the WBO 168-pound champion. Jesse Hart is his mandatory. Jesse Hart, if he beats Mike Gavronsky this weekend, it's going to be um, on a top rank on ESPN, not ESPN+. Plus. It's 8.50 a.m. right now, Eastern Standard Time, August the 15th, 2018. The fight is taking place. I believe the card starts at 9 p.m. EST on ESPN. And the undercards um, uh, before Hart versus Gavronsky and Jennings versus Dementrinko are going to be on um, ESPN+. Plus. Nonetheless, I've said it before, even though I'm having some issues with Top Rank because they keep copywriting my shit, you know, fucking had to get a lawyer. Um, nonetheless, ESPN Plus is a really, 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 really good. In fact, they copyrighted me for Jesse Hart's uh, uh, fight that I covered. But nonetheless, um, ESPN Plus is a really, really, really good deal, especially when you're getting the international fights. You know, overall, they're going to be giving us 54 cards in total a year scattered through top rank on ESPN, um, ESPN Plus and the cards they pick up. So, you know, just being able to watch the Tevin Former fight and Philly boxing is doing really Philly boxers are doing really, really good right now. Just to be able to watch the Tevin Former fight that was in Australia. And if you've ever had the watch an australian fight stream live and you're from the east coast or even the west coast you know you have to be up some ridiculously early hour in the morning and i understand what the uk fans say when they say well to watch your mayweather fights and your pay-per-view fights over there we got to be up at three four five o'clock in the morning and shit so you know i get it but in the case of uh Gilberto ramirez let's go look i guess let's go talk about 168 you got David Benavidez, who is over with Showtime. He's back with Showtime, and he is a Samson Lukovic, Lukowitz or Lukovic, Lukowitz, I believe it is, and basically Al Heyman fighter. You know, I'm not sure if he's fully Al Heyman, but the 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 point is he's back on Showtime. He was with top rank for about two weeks or so. They even gave him a two hundred and fifty thousand dollars signing bonus, from my understanding. But you know, turns out that the contract wasn't legit. And he had to go back over to um, uh, Lukowitz. So 
I'm guessing they were trying to make Alberto Ramirez versus David Benavidez. And before we get to that, before we get any 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 further in that, let's talk about where George Groves is. George Groves is taking on Colin Smith, who's number one by the WBC, you know, because the the winner of Groves versus Smith will be the WBC Diamond Champion and the mandatory for David Benavidez. David Benavidez is likely going to fight Anthony Durrell. We're waiting for a date for that. That's the that's the name we've been hearing. So George Groves is in the World Boxing Super Series, taking on Colin Smith in Saudi Arabia, Saudi Arabia, Jeddah, of all places, which, you know, but I understand with the World Boxing Super Series, to not confuse you guys too much, it was a 168 pound tournament. Um, Gilberto Ramirez and Jesse Hart weren't in it. You know, I can I can believe that it's because they couldn't risk losing two of their fighters to the tournament to be broadcast over there because they needed them for their top rank dates but whatever the case is um george groves and colin smith are fighting on september the 28th in saudi arabia and the world boxing super series owed saudi arabia a fight so that's why it's taking place there and not in the uk with both fighters being from the uk we don't know what rocky felding is going to do right now but remember his belt can't be unified it's not supposed to be unified it's not even supposed to exist so when you're the world champion, you can't go unifying. Only George Groves can unify. If anything, Rocky Felding is supposed to and should eventually be ordered to fight George Groves. Unless the WBA do some bullshit and they make an interim champion. If they haven't already, then Rocky Felding would have to fight who that interim champion is before he fights George Groves. And it's a whole bunch of bullshit mumbo jumbo. Jose um, Uzcat, the guy right now is fighting over on Showtime. I don't know if he's an Al Heyman fighter or not, but he was supposed to fight Caleb Plant, who is his mandatory, and Caleb Plant is injured. But I don't see um, um, Uzcat and Gilberto Ramirez getting the deal done. In fact, I'm wondering who Gilberto Ramirez is going to fight next. I heard a name, you know, that was floating around, but understand that when you're a champion by any organization, you have to fight somebody ranked in the top 15 of your sanctioning body to defend your title. So Gilberto Ramirez has to fight somebody in the top 15, whether this is the current top 15 or, in fact, I did go to the WBO website. I almost forgot to pull that up. What was I looking at? I was looking at Mars because I was trying to see if Jesse Vargas is, I mean, Jesse Hart's last opponent was ranked. Demond um nicholson i had talked to him last year i forgot what fight it was it was at and i still got i feel bad because i still got the interview on my camera and i never uploaded it i got a whole bunch of shit i've in i've done i've never uploaded i gotta stop doing that um we're gonna go to the the august rankings for the wbo are not up yet right now it's august the 15th so I wanted to see if Mike Gavronsky, we're going to talk about him a little bit later, too. We don't want this video. to Damn, this video going to be 20 minutes. I didn't know I was running my mouth that long. Well, I'm just giving you a whole breakdown of the 168 pound division, too. So chill out. Also, you may notice that my speech be fucked up sometime. Um, I was in a coma earlier this year and um. A lot of shit got fucked up and I'm still, you know, a lot of shit got fucked up, man. Fucking three weeks. What was I looking for? Oh, all, no, July, the last current WBO rankings. OK, here we are. So as you can see, Jesse Hart's opponent's not ranked. But the point I was trying to make is when you're champion, you have to fight somebody ranked in the top 15 of your sanctioning body. So if Gilberto Ramirez is not going to fight any of these guys, which is highly unlikely, you know, I mean, is he going to stick around for the winner? I mean, how he's going to have to fight Jesse Hart. Jesse Hart is the mandatory. If Jesse Hart wins this weekend, let's say the WBO says they have to fight. And the WBO and Bob Arum, you know, and top rank are high, kind of in cahoots. It's no secret. But Jesse Hart is going to have to get his title shot if he beats Gavronsky sometime. I I'm saying December's too soon, you know, because he wants to have a nice you know, like a, a solid training camp for a title run. Because as I said, if he wins, for the 168 pound division especially with his mouthpiece it's going to be really really big news 
You see what I'm saying? So I'm saying January, no later than February. But that also lines up with the timeline for Gilberto Ramirez to fight the winner of the World Boxing Super Series tournament. Whether it's Colin Smith, Smith or George Groves. And then we don't know what the WBC is going to do in ordering David Benavidez to fight the winner of that. This is kind of a wild card. Remember, James DeGale did some, you know, people think of some bitch shit. He dropped his belt. I still like James DeGale. You know, I'm still a fan. But that just seemed like with some bitch shit that he did, you know. And it's looking like we're going to be getting um, Gilberto Ramirez versus Jesse Hart, you know, too soon. You know, so I just hope that um he goes out there, does a uh, demolition job on um Mr. Gavronsky here you know i mean he's got some speed and activity to him i do say that this was years ago by the way this fight right here this is obviously this is him versus uh turiano johnson 24 uh two and one with 15 ko's 32 years old he's been on a nice little win streak as i was saying earlier i would like to see some footage of the deshaun johnson fight because remember the Sean johnson almost stopped jesse hart the year after um he beat uh, Mike Gavronsky. So I want to see what the outcome of, of some video of what happened with this and what the cards were, whether you know, whether Gavronsky was winning or not. Because before that, his last loss. Oh wait, he had two fights with Deshaun Johnson. So he beat him, then lost to him. Oh no, he owed Deshaun Johnson another fight. He got Brian Vera on his record. He even got a win boot. Oh, this is these guys been dodging around each other for years i'm more interested in the fight now i wonder how many times these guys were supposed to fight jesse hart and gavronsky anyway i'm gonna be covering the fight um i'm gonna be going to the media workout not the media workout the media workout is in a couple of hours um i'm gonna be going to the uh final press conference and uh talk to jesse hart uh hopefully talk to bob Barham about the 168 pound division and you know the plans and shit like that um hopefully be able to talk to somebody from top rank to tell them hey listen i tell you right here right now you can monetize my videos but it makes no sense for you to be you know um copyright me like i don't make no bread off of this and then i'm going to go to court like i'm happily retired like i don't do this as like a source of income you know so I've been told it's like, ah, bro, you ain't doing nothing wrong. And that shit is, you know, that fair use shit is, 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 is the new wave. So, you know, I just feel like they should like monetize or block, but don't try to like, when you copyright somebody, especially me being, I've been on YouTube for years. I've beat dozens and dozens and dozens of copyrights. No bullshit across two channels. So it's like, I just don't come out here and say, oh, I'm going to just okie dokie and just show these people shit with not knowing in it. You know, nah. So, you know, I don't want to be going to court and all that shit. And it's like, yo, like, I will go that far. You know, and I'm thinking like, it ain't even worth it, man. I'm just trying to cover these fights that really ain't nobody else talking about. Anyway, let me shut up before I go on a rant and shit. I'm T-Street Controversy. This is T-Street Controversy Live. Please subscribe.